Are you looking for how to increase your vertical jump? Well, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do that in this video. What's up everybody, Nathaniel Morton here with NathanielMorton.com helping you get bigger, stronger, faster, and more explosive. Before I get into today's video, I wanna let you know that if you comment jump, J-U-M-P down below in the comment section and like this video, I will send you a free body weight vertical jump training program, absolutely free, if you like the video and comment jump down below in the comment section. Here we go, today's video is on the topic of why you can't jump high. This is a sad, sad situation. So many people are suffering from this disease. It's called feet on the ground-itis, okay? They can't get their feet off the ground. They can't jump high. They can't touch the rim. They can't dunk a basketball. We need to fix that because this is a major problem. Now, if you can't jump high, there are three problems that could possibly be the cause. You might have all three of these issues. Some people only have two. Some people only have one of these issues. What I want you to do while you are watching this video, while I write things down on the whiteboard, I want you to think about yourself, your own body, your own situation, and see if maybe that problem is for you, okay? For lack of a better word. See if you have that problem, okay? so. Let's just jump, jump straight into it with the first problem. The first problem that some people face is that they are lacking strength. Their lower body, their posterior chain is not strong enough to fulfill their full potential of what their vertical jump could be. Now, I want you to remember, think about yourself. Is this you? You might say, how do I know whether or not I am strong enough in my legs, in my posterior chain. There's a simple test. The test is this. Can you squat 1.5 times your body weight? Can you squat 1.5 times your body weight? If you cannot squat 1.5 times your body weight, chances are your legs are not strong enough to get a max vertical jump to fulfill your potential of what your vertical jump would be if they were strong enough. So. For all of you who are terrible at math out there like me, let's do myself for an example. I weigh 200 pounds. I'm going to go into my iPhone or my Android. I'm gonna put in the calculator 200 for 200 pounds times, multiply that by 1.5. 200 times 1.5. The answer is going to be 300. If I personally, Nathaniel Morton, cannot squat over 300 pounds, then my legs are not strong enough to jump as high as I possibly could. What you want to aim for, if your legs are not strong enough, is begin to get them stronger by doing your compound movements and these rep ranges and progressive overload and eat food, which I'm going to talk about in one second. Get your legs strong enough to the point where you can squat 1.5 times your body weight, but even past that and shoot for being able to squat two times your body weight. I want to be able to squat 400 pounds. That is, going, that is what is going to help me jump the highest. So there you have it. If you can't, that's how you know whether or not your legs are strong enough. If your legs are not strong enough, let's talk about the things you can do to get your legs strong enough to be able to jump as high as you possibly can. Number one, you gotta start doing compound movements. You gotta start doing compound movements for your legs, for your posterior chain, your lower back. So these are movements like your squats. And a compound movement, all that that means is you're using multiple muscle groups at once. An isolation movement will be your biceps, a, a, a bicep curl, a concentration curl that's only using your biceps. A compound movement would be a deadlift. In a deadlift, you're using your calves, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your posterior chain, your lower back, your core, your traps. You're using everything. That is a compound movement. So the compound movements that you want to be doing to increase your strength so that you can jump as high as possible are your back squats, your front squats, your deadlifts, your power cleans, your lunges, your straight leg deadlifts, your kettlebell swings, um, all of these movements, most of the movements that use um, 
all of the muscles in your legs, in your posterior chain, those are the movements, that, the compound movements that you need to be doing to increase your strength. Next one, this is what I do. You don't have to do this, I just put this in there because this is what I do to get stronger. I do these rep and set ranges. On one day, let's say I go into the gym, I wanna train vertical jump, it's a Monday. I do eight sets of three reps. I'm only doing three reps, but I'm going very heavy on those three reps because I want to increase my maximum strength. I do eight sets of that. Next, the next time I go in to do my vertical jump, I do five sets of five. Okay, so on Monday, I did eight sets of three. Um, then, actually, I would do squats on Monday, and then I would do deadlifts on Thursday, but for my deadlifts, I would do five sets of five. Okay? Then next Monday, I would do squats again, but I would do three sets of 10. Then on Thursday, I would do deadlifts, but I would do eight sets of three. That is how I rotate my squats and my deadlifts so that I make sure I'm hitting my compound movements and I make sure that I'm hitting my, these rep and set ranges. Now, the most important thing that you need to understand to get stronger is that you have to be progressive overloading. So for myself, I do these rep ranges, but I'm always trying to increase the amount of weight that I am doing with these rep ranges for my squats and my deadlifts. So progressive overload just means that you either do more weight or you do more reps when we're talking about vertical jump. It could also mean that you do less rest time. It could also mean uh, many other things, but for vertical jump, you want to keep your rest time um, pretty, pretty uh, consistent and progressive overload for vertical jump just means do more weight or do more reps. And then, moving on to the last one, you gotta be sure that you are eating enough food. You want to be eating in a caloric surplus to gain as much strength as possible. And you might say, well, what does that mean? So, let me put it like this. For myself, let's say, every, ugh, everyone has a maintenance level calories that if they eat that many calories a day, they will maintain their weight, okay? So for myself, let's say it's 3,000 calories. If I eat 3,000 calories every single day, I will maintain my weight. If I eat less than 3,000, I will lose weight. If I eat more than 3,000, that puts me in a caloric surplus, I will gain weight, I will build muscle, I will get stronger. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna that gaining weight is bad. When you build muscle, you gain weight as well. If you're building muscle, you're, you're pretty much gonna get heavier. So gaining weight is not a bad thing. So, but you wanna be in a caloric surplus. Also, when you're eating your food, you wanna make sure that you are eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight at least. So for myself, I weigh 200 pounds. I at least get 200 grams of protein per day. That's how much I consume every single day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you should be eating 150 grams of protein at least every single day. So that's what I mean when I write eat food down at the bottom. So this is the first problem that you might have of why you can't jump high. The telltale sign of, of not being strong enough is if you cannot squat 1.5 times your body weight. Moving on to number two. Problem number two of why you can't jump high. Problem number two is that you might be lacking explosive speed. You might be lacking explosive speed. We all know the guy in the gym who can squat 500 pounds, but he can't jump six inches off the floor. Okay, we all, we all see the person in the gym like that. This is because he lacks explosive speed or he might lack problem number three, which I'll tell you later. But if you lack explosive speed, explosive speed, rate of force development, that is how fast you can move weight from point A down at the bottom to point B up at the top. How fast can you move from your the bottom of your squat to the top of your squat? Because when you're training for vertical jump, you don't wanna do normal tempo squats. You don't wanna do normal tempo deadlifts. You want everything to be explosive because the vertical jump is an explosive movement. So how do you gain explosive speed? How do you improve your rate of force development? Number one, you just move the weight faster. Okay, you make an effort to move the weight faster. Now, you wanna be doing this with all different 
percentages of your weight. So let's say you have 50% of your max one rep squat on the bar. So let's just make it easy. Let's say you have 135 pounds on the bar, okay? You're gonna be able to move that faster than if you have 225 pounds on the bar. It doesn't matter as long as you are trying to move the weight as fast as possible. Even if you have 500 pounds on the bar and you can only move it super slow, as long as you are trying to move it as fast as you possibly can, you are going to be recruiting type 2B fast twitch muscle fibers, which are the muscle fibers that you need to create in your body to jump as high as possible. So that's number one. You need to, with every exercise you do, squats, deadlifts, kettlebell swings, okay, not every exercise. Squats, deadlifts, kettlebell swings, power cleans, all of your jumps, your, your dumbbell squat jumps, your um, split leg lunge jumps, all of these types of exercises, you want to be able, you want to be moving the weight as fast as possible. And one other thing I want to say is that form always comes first. Don't move the weight fast if you're going to sacrifice good form. Then you'll just get injured. Make sure you have your good form down first and then move the weight as fast as possible with good form. So that's the first one, move the weight faster. Second one is do weighted jumps, okay? The best way to improve your explosive speed, the best way to improve your rate of force development is by doing jumps while you are holding resistance. So dumbbell squat jumps is a really good one. You hold two five or 10 pound dumbbells and you do squat jumps into the air. That's a great one to improve your explosive speed. Um, what else? What is the other good one that, that I'm not even editing this video out. I'm letting you watch me suffer. Explosive step ups. Explosive step ups where you put a chair or a bench and you step up on the bench and you explode up while you are holding dumbbells. That is super good for explosive speed, explosive strength. But all of these jumping exercises are really good to improve your rate of force development and improve that explosive speed. So if this is you, if you think that you might be lacking explosive speed, then I would suggest moving the weight faster and adding in some weighted jumps like dumbbell squat jumps and some, why do I keep forgetting this name? Explosive step ups, with holding dumbbells, dumbbell explosive step ups. Um, so if you can squat 1.5 times your body weight and your legs are strong enough, this might potentially be your problem. Your best bet is to every, is your best bet, the best thing to do is every single vertical jump workout that you do, just add in things for strength, things for explosive speed, and things for reactive strength and reactive speed, which is the next problem, the third problem, here we go. If you are lacking reactive speed and reactive strength, well, first of all, you might be saying, well, how do I know if I'm lacking reactive speed and strength? Um, there's a simple test that you could do, and that test is this. You can drop off of a box about uh, 12 to 24 inches, okay? 18 inches is probably ideal. Um, well, first of all, jump straight up in the air and see how high you could touch on a wall. Put like a piece of tape on your finger, jump up, touch the wall as high as you can. Then drop off of the box, hit the ground, and jump up as high as you can and hit the wall. If your normal jump was higher than your depth jump off of the box, then you are lacking reactive speed and reactive strength. You should be able to actually jump higher when dropping off of the box due to the force that you are absorbing and then the force that you are outputting up into the air. When you're just standing on the ground and you just do a vertical jump, you're not absorbing as much force as when you drop off of a box. So if you drop off the box and it's lower than your normal jump, you are lacking reactive speed and reactive strength. So what do you do? You do some reactive jumps. Okay, that's number one. Do some reactive jumps. This is anything from your jump rope 
to your ankle bounces, to your line jumps, to your hurdle jumps, to your depth jumps, okay? Make sure that you are hitting the floor and going back up because if you just, if, let me stutter, if you just do a normal box jump and you go from right here on the ground and you jump up, you're not improving your reactive speed and your reactive strength. The only way that you improve your reactive speed and reactive strength is if you absorb the force and then you go back up, you jump up. So you could do this one time, like a depth jump, drop off a box, hit the ground and explode up, or you can do it multiple times like hurdle jumps and jump over multiple hurdles, or like line jumps and jump over a line back and forth, okay? But you wanna make sure that you are hitting the ground, absorbing force, and then going going up into the air. That is how you are going to improve your reactive speed and reactive strength. Um, and then the second thing that you can do is you can do sprints and sled pushes. This is great because think about how many times you are hitting the ground in a sprint. You are constantly hitting the ground, hitting the ground as you are running. That is improving your reactive speed and reactive strength. Um, and sled pushes doing the same thing as a sprint except you're using weight. So if you could do sled pushes, that would also improve your reactive speed and your reactive strength. So that's the third issue that you might have as to why you can't jump high, why you have feet on the ground itis, it could be because you're lacking reactive speed and reactive strength. So what should you do now? You should assess which one of these you think you have and then start to do more of those exercises that can help you in your vertical jump workouts. What if you say, Nate, I still don't know which ones I have. Do all of them. Do all of them in every single workout. Do some squats and deadlifts to improve your strength. Do some um, move the weight faster while you're doing that. Do some dumbbell squat jumps and do some dumbbell explosive step ups to improve your rate of force development and your explosive speed. And then do some depth jumps and some ankle bounces and some line jumps and some hurdle jumps and some sprints and some sled pushes to improve your reactive speed and your reactive strength. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this helped you. I hope that now you have a little bit of an understanding on why you might not be able to jump high. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down below in the comment section. I respond to every single comment. I can better help you down there if you give me your specific issue, if you tell me how much you can squat, your height, your weight, what you're eating, what exercises, if you, uh, what exercises you have been doing. If you tell me all of your details down below in the comment section, I can help you a lot better. And I will help you, I'd be glad to help you. So leave your comment down below, like this video, um, and comment jump if you want the free body weight vertical jump training program. Share this if you think somebody else can get value from this video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And ladies and gentlemen, take action because action is everything. Knowledge is not power, it is only potential power until you take action on what you know. Knowing without doing gets you nowhere. I'll see you guys in the next video.